Okay, I think we're on. Hooray, there's some sound. Boy, this has been a weird day. So we use um, some soft, so the studio is right next to the control room and I'm in the studio, but I use remote access software to connect and um, boy, oh boy, did it have problems. So uh, let me see if I can get everything back up. But um, we had some other issues with, uh, guess we're live now? Yeah, we are. Yeah, this is crazy. I'm gonna, I, can't, I have to listen to myself. So this is gonna be fun. I'm delayed and I'm gonna hear myself uh, delayed, which will be no fun. But the software usually lets us Usually we have software that controls this stuff for us. Actually, I think I'm going to just mute it so I don't go crazy. Um, but yeah, we uh, generally, is it out of focus here? Feels like it's out. Oh, you know what? Probably not the right resolution. Um, and it's okay. I should mute the, uh, well, no, I have to kind of keep an eye on it so that I can see whether we um, have anybody coming, coming in. So uh, we did a lot of changes in here. I actually did a lot of stuff on the, um, uh, the desk here, it's actually got a lot more room because we had Candace a week and a half ago, I think. And um, it's been challenging. You know, that was great, but it's a little challenging because of space. So I made some changes to give us more room if that happens again. Nick Murphy is talking about coming on. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, so today I'm going to be doing... Uh, I'm going to be doing the Space Marine board game, the board game. Um, I peeled off the stickers, but I have not opened it up yet. Uh, this was uh, given to me by uh, Games Workshop, and they are, you know, wanting us to do a little bit of co uh, coverage, which is cool. We may actually do some game... I mean, we keep threatening to do stuff on game night for this. Nikki's all for it, so maybe it'll just be a two-player thing. Uh, this is a two-player game, 30 minutes. I've heard it's not a real strong board game, but I don't know yet. I do know based on what they give you here. It's one Marine and a lot of Termagants, um, or yeah, Tyranid uh, Termagants and uh, one rip, oh, two Ripper Storms. So it's basically um, quite a bit of minis. I, I can't see that. So let's open it up. I have a, um, I did as I, 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 earlier I was paint, I had painted, I, so I had some other ones that I worked on here. Um, uh, that were the same Tyranid Termagant. So I did three of them. I painted them up. I kind of cheated today uh, so that you could, so I could actually paint because uh, I actually wanted to do the unboxing. And uh, so I did them in a Zenithal highlight. And I'm going to use the GW contrast paints. They actually sent me some. La I had bought a lot uh, previously. And I had, they had sent me some uh, last year of the paints. And they are pretty great. I mean, I've, I've really loved the contrast paint. Scott and I painted a bunch of this stuff. So they're giving you a bunch of dice. Um, Scott and I painted a lot of stuff during uh, the pandemic times <laughs> um, where we uh, were working on uh, Marvel United, the main first box, both of us on streams. It was fun because Scott hadn't really painted a lot in, for a long time. Last time I, he painted was with me when we did uh, Space Marine, uh, not Space Marine, Space Hulk. And um, what happened was is I had been painting them uh, and I like to do a good job, especially on the Marines. You know, I really like them to look kind of cool. And so back in the day, I, this was one of, this is the one I painted. So I painted them and then Scott's like, it sure would be good to have a painted version of this. So I just used my Space Marines that I had already been working on and finished them up. And then when we got together, we painted uh, the Tyranid uh, units from that game, and we uh, did them relatively quickly, and they turned out phenomenally. So I, I never really got back to it. I painted some of the minis, as you saw, one of them there, um, and I do want to do that as well. But uh, but it was great because Scott actually got to paint for the first time in ages, and we had a great time. Uh, it was remote, um, which was not so much fun, but still was fun. Um, but yeah, they give you a lot of termagants in here, so. That's exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing how this works. It might be fun with two players as well because it's really one against many. Um, and they give you a really massive board here. Let's just open that up. Um, 
Hmm. Boy, I'm usually pretty good at this. I have a knife over here. Let's just use that. I think I have it. Uh, I actually, you know what I can do? I'm going to do the jeans thing. So my dad taught me a long time ago, if you rub the cellophane, you can't show you this, but if you rub the edge of the cellophane on your jeans, because he used to do this to open LPs, it'll just, uh, you rub it on your pants back and forth relatively quickly, and it will split. Huh, didn't split it yet. Um, has to get kind of hot, which is not necessarily fun on your knee, but let's do it. Goodness gracious, I feel like I'm out of focus. I'm not, it must be just the, uh, the display, but that works. It gets it going and you can peel it off. Uh, I, back in the day, was doing LPs when I was young. I bought, I did not like tape, and so I bought LPs, and then CDs came along pretty, pretty quickly after that, and then I went crazy. Um, yeah, this is a pretty big board, and it's got some, <laughs> some uh, killed term, uh, termagants on here already and blood burning through. Very alien-esque. Really actually quite good looking board. So we'll see. I'm wondering if we do do this on the show, how busy this board is will be appearance-wise. But it is what comes with the game. They include this to protect the game, uh, you know, the bits from the rest of the stuff, which is cool. Uh, it does a pretty good job. I did not put a very good, do a very good job putting it all back in there. But I'm eager to paint. This is what I really wanted to do today. Um, I'm sad that I ha haven't had more time to paint. Um, the uh, This looks quite good. And it looks like it's got quite a bit of stuff. They actually sent me all of the stuff that will be sold at um, Games Workshop. I mean, not Games Workshop. Uh, Barnes & Noble. And I love that because I, ha I buy them. Usually, I think they're pretty, I always have this, you know, I want to get started with the folks on the show doing these things, and uh, so I'm always dreaming that it'll do, because the game that I think is really phenomenal is Space Hulk. Um, I hope they put that out again. It's hard to get it once again, but uh, I have two versions of it. I have, I don't have any of the old stuff. Well, I mean, some of it's old. I have stuff from 14 years ago, which was what we painted here. Um, and then I have the one that they did five years later which is almost exactly the same, except it has, um, it has uh, more tiles, I think is what they added to it, which is cool. Um, and I love that it's all available. So let's see here. Um, the, uh, I do have these three. I don't have any, I do have a Marine that was, I think, part of the Warhammer introductory set, the new Warhammer introductory set that they gave me. That's where these actually came from. Uh, but I'm looking forward to actually painting. I've never painted any Tyranids. I'm going to do them as their kind of like recommended scheme lately. Uh, let's see, I think I have the manual for this so I can use them for reference. I actually, <clears throat> even though the desk is not entirely clean, I have it quite a bit or more organized than I had. Um, I'm really excited about it because it will, number one, I actually have a computer right here and I can look at reference it images. Actually, why don't I just do that? Uh, let's do a new window. Let me it up here. But I have a double monitor set up here, which is really helpful. And um, let's see, what should I do? Space Marine, the board game. So I don't know if this is related like to the, I mean, that's the thing. They're saying it's not much of a board game, which I don't necessarily believe is true. Uh, but it is, um, it is maybe like inspired by the video game stuff. And that's exciting. So let's see here. Excuse me, I'm going to mute. Okay. Hopefully, that's you guys have been hearing me. I don't know. Um, let me go and... Oh, I know. I was speaking. I heard myself. I'm going to go grab a drink real quick. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm excited about working on all this stuff. We have... Uh, the sad realization when I did all this organization was how much uh, miniature stuff I have. I actually have a lot 
a lot of Games Workshop stuff. Even more than I, I mean, I knew I had it, but I really have a lot. And so I, um, um, wow, that doesn't feel cold. Uh, Uh, I really have a lot, and it's kind of bad. You know, I, mean, I need to get through them. Some of these things, I have some. When I was very first into the hobby, I bought <clears throat> a bunch of the um, kind of like games that were either just fading or uh, were gone. For example, Warmaster and Warhammer 40k Epic. I don't know how much of that stuff I actually have, uh, but. Uh, Um, I don't know that I need that stuff, right? My friend Sebastian came to visit, and he saw all that stuff. He's like, "Wow, you should sell this." <laughs> he felt that it's, you know, you're not really, um, you're not really going to do it, and it's people want this stuff. But I also feel like they might be soon doing it again. You never know, right? So. Um, that would be cool too. I, I don't care. Let me zoom this in. But uh, I'm kind of excited. I don't think these images are. I'm zooming the text. Let me just save that. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, let me slow. Let me get the book. I can actually look at Space Marine. I'm sure they've got it since you get to paint them. Now, the cool thing is this is all kind of related to the new um, the new latest release of Warhammer 40k which is Indomitus I believe the name is um, wow these look great um, so yeah I don't have a lot of Termagant stuff and ter uh, Tyranid I wish uh, Nick was here because that is his thing he paints and he said I picked the worst army just because of how much how many units you need to paint but I really love the I love the look of them and I think the new scheme is kind of cool, the purple and bone color. So I'm going to do something from one of these here. I'll do paint them similar. Well, not necessarily similarly. These guys are fantastic painters. But I'll use that as a reference. We'll see how we'll do. So I'm going to use the, uh, the, um, the speed paints. No, not speed paints. That's, a, um, that's a army painters. I'm going to use the contrast paints. Um, and let's see how they go. I've still not, I, I did have one speed paint last week that we tried with Candace, which I'd never uh, done before. So these are dark. And so what I'm going to probably do, you know, I mean, I, I did them in the Zenithal style relatively quickly. I don't, I'm sorry about that, not quite on the shot. Um, relatively quickly. I may dry brush some of the bone. I had a, wow, why is this not focusing? There we go. Um, I may try to do some something, uh, sort of what I did with Candace, where we, dry brushed, we sprayed them all, then we put the an ink on it, and then we dry brushed the bone color on top of that. And that was actually pretty neat. I'd never done that before. Um, and we'll see how this goes. These are going to be a little bit more complicated than I normally do, uh, particularly because I like, I like the faces to be a little bit more bold, and I didn't put that much into them. We'll see as far as, I, so what I normally do is I will airbrush, usually when I spend a little bit more time pre, uh, uh, coat, uh, uh, priming them, I spray a little bit more white on the faces because I like them to kind of be the focal point of the uh, figure. But um, let's start with, let's start with the purple. I do have, let's see, what color do they call it? So they sent in the, in the, uh, Warhammer 40k box, uh, the introductory set, they give you five paints, which is pretty awesome. And um, I think I put them in the box over here. I, I've got all my racks all better organized, and of course that's not right there. What did I do with it? Oh, too many things happening today. Let me look here. Oh, there it is. I did not put them here. I do need this, though, because it has my bone. I don't have a ton of standard paints anymore. Most of them have uh, faded in quality. Uh, this is bone. I'll just use that one. That's an old style paint that is very much like the old Games Workshop ones. And 
Yeah, I did not clean my airbrush, which is bad. I'm gonna, I have it soaking right now, so hopefully that'll be okay when I get back to it. Um, I do wish I could hear the music. I like listening to the music. Uh, probably drives everybody else crazy. So, let's see the purple. Where's the ones that I did get from them? I didn't put them in the box. I had so much stuff, organiza organizational stuff that we did, and I didn't really put it all back properly. Um, goodness, where is it? Is it in that rack? Games Workshop. Wow. Well, I'm not going to actually use that specific color. I will use a similar color here. I'll probably use the Magos Purple. Let's see how that looks. I wanted to try to match. There's not. I don't have a ton of colors. I have the Luxian Purple and this one are the two main ones. And then there's the Leviathan Purple, which is probably more blue. But this looks pretty cool. And, you know, you're going to put it on and build it up. So what they're doing is they scales on their back. Let's zoom in a little bit more. These are tiny minis. Not really tiny, but a little bit more tiny than I'm used to working on lately. Because this is the last ones I've been working on. Uh, the orcs from uh, Warhammer Underworlds. These are great, too. Uh, this guy's mostly getting done. And, you know, this is entirely um, the Citadel contrast paint, except for the silver I dry brushed the older chain mail that I have here. Uh, and then I think I might have done a metallic medium from Vallejo. Oh, here's the paints. Goodness gracious, I'm a knucklehead. On top of the box. So this is Nagaroth Knight. That is not the color. Let's try this one. Luxian Purple. That's closer. That is not very closed. Sounds like I have a... So yeah, these are the paints that come in the starter set, which is... They're great. You know, it's the standard Citadel colors. Oh, they have the bone here. So I'll use this one. This is the Wraith bone. Um, of course they have this color. This is part of the, what you would need. And then this is for your Marine, because it's an Ultramarine. And then you got the Balthasar Gold, which I'm sure you're using on your Marine. And Abaddon Black, so, or Abaddon Black, I don't know. Um, so yeah, this is, this is close. I'm glad I looked, because I want it to look similar. And I'm going to try these. Uh, and they often have like analogs, for sure, in the contrast paints for the colors. So let's see. Let's shake this up a little bit more. I usually put... I got one in there. I got an agitator. I put agitators in. I buy the... Um, I don't even know where they're at now. The uh, green um, uh, glass beads from... Uh, they're used from surgical glass from... Uh, boy, I really made a mess in here. I, I've done a lot of organization, but it's not... I have no idea where those are at. Um, but I use those because I feel that it's great to really shake these up when you now I don't know how what the pigment level is in these but for example look at this one here in the basiliconum gray there's a lot of pigment at the bottom and if you don't shake it up um, and it takes a lot of shaking for me I feel these contrast paints work their best when you have the pigment completely shaken up um, so you definitely like I'll show you here let's do this it takes a little while and if you don't have the agitator bead in there it's even longer um, but I'll show you after a minute or so Let me change this so I can just see if the quality is okay. Because <laughs> I can't, I don't have any reference point on this stuff. Uh, I'm sure it's, uh, yeah, 14, 144 is my uh, speed. There we go. That looks pretty good. Um, but you can see, right, already it's not really, it's shaking. You can see the vortex mix there. But uh, some people, I, I was using the contrast paints and I had this mixer, but I really started using it on the mixer because I'm used to the, shaking it up and I've used agitator beads in my paints before um, but I'm used to them doing a pretty good job and staying mostly suspended like you can see this one here is separated and this is obviously not an old paint but let's just shake it by hand I don't have any um, agitator bead in there but it it'll get pretty good and it's usually usable but the contrast paints just don't do it see this is still not done it has a good amount of mixing still and you want all the pigment the, the, to be suspended in the, the the medium and so some of them require more mixing uh, I imagine some of them that are single pigments still even though you think it's mixed it probably needs to be pretty agitated in there but um, I will probably end up using this color anyway so I will just keep mixing it up 
um, but you can see it takes a little bit of while, a little time with the ad, the mixer. So I, I don't know. I, I I mean, you definitely need to shake them. But there you go. That's pretty much mixed. Um, let me mix that a little bit more. So I'm going to try to do some of these, you know, apply some of your standard techniques to this mini in addition to doing the contrast uh, style paint. So first let's do this. So the spines are purple as well. And I need a brush. So let's use one of these. When Candace was here, we used primer. We, we hand primered a mini and oh my gosh, hand priming a mini is great, but I did not clean up fast enough. As a matter of fact, let's see if that's sitting here still. It is. And let's see if it's going to clean out now. But it would not clean out. The paint, the primers stick really well. So let's just check it out here real quick. So definitely clean quickly. Uh, this is my regret that I'm not cleaning that airbrush right now. Uh, it is one of my better ones. Um, I tried to use a basic one that I have and it, um, and it, um, Oh, there you go. So that came out pretty easily. I was trying to clean it with water and no go. Uh, took a lot of effort. And I ended up finally getting to the ac acrylic after making a tremendous mess. It like spread all over the place and wasn't, um, wasn't cleaning up. Fantastic. Okay, cool. But yeah, you definitely, I don't use those uh, bowls so much. I was giving it so Candace could do a lot of painting. Um, you know, those little, uh, palette pads there, whatever. These come with my red grass uh, wet palette. I bought these recently. So if you're mixing, and I'm not going to mix right now, this is phenomenal because the um, Adam Smasher from Tabletop Minions recommended this to me uh, at Gen Con. And I actually bought the one he, because the next week I think he put out an episode about like kind of weird supplies. But these are those fidget poppers. And what's great about them is the paint shrinks on this surface. It's silicone, and it just comes right off. The contrast paints are a little less likely to pop off, but they still do. If you let it dry and don't fiddle with it, they come right off. Uh, and ac standard acrylics really pop off. It's pretty amazing. Um, and it's worth checking it out. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So these are those brushes I've been buying. They actually give you a few. They give you one in the box for this one. Um, and uh, they are pretty good. Let's focus, camera, before I start painting. Now, you know what? I generally put, the, well, they're doing some highlighting, which I probably will do um, on these edges that will give it some definition so that it looks a little worn, you know, since these are just their armor, their genetic armor. So I will just paint the purple as is. And so with contrast paints, boy, I keep wanting to say speed paints. That's funny. Um, I've only said contrast paints for ages. And then now just been thinking about the trying out the new speed paints. Um, I will say, though, these contrast paints will last a long time. You don't want them to pool too much. So I'm putting the purple on, which may be not a good idea. I generally do lighter colors first, but we will see how that goes. So you put these on as kind of wet. You know, you lead, make sure your leading edge is wet. Uh, see, this is already drying, so it could. Now, these are kind of organic and shape, you know, lots of shapes, so you don't have to worry about it too much. But if you're working where it's wet and you see how quickly it dries, you want it to work the way these are supposed to work, um, not putting any um, uh, retarders. You know, Golden makes a retarder that I use for standard acrylics because everything dries so quickly here. Um, but you don't want to mix with any of that stuff with these paints because I don't feel they are uh, going to respond well to it. I, I, I've not tried it yet. So I got a little bit of purple on the tail, which I don't want, but I will touch that up with some gray later. Um, I did use the, I don't think they have that color anymore, uh, the Rattle Can Primer to do this miniature. This is my one of my first um, 
contrast painted minis. And this turned out really well. This is solidly white. I, paint, I primed the whole thing the white, did not do a zenithal style, and this turns out great. You don't have to do the zenithal style highlighting where it's already got the shading built into it. But I really, I really like um, going with that stuff, uh, you know, with the, uh, with the zenithal. The zenithal is a little bit more of a uh, work. You can do it with a, where you prime it black, then with a brush, and then just dry brush. Basically, you don't need to do the gray version that I do in these, um, in the airbrush version of this, because um, you're just going to put the white on it. You're going to dry brush white and work at it from the top down and make sure you put the most amount of light uh, undercoating on the top parts. You know, anything that's going to be more like the sun is going to be exposed to. This airbrush method, you, you paint the whole thing black, and then you paint the, um, you paint the uh, gray, the gray color on at a 45 degree angle. Wow, I just put a bunch on that tail right there. Let me see if I can clean it up. Um, it's not too hard, as long as it's still, I mean, they dry fast. But you can do a pretty good job, and then I can touch it up. I, it, the cool thing is, I feel, you know, a lot of people are like, "Oh, you got to be so careful with the." I'm sorry, it's not on camera, uh, but I just got the bulk of it off of there. Um, just putting a little bit of gray on there, you won't even notice it, unless you're doing something like a Space Marine with a lot of, you know, smooth surfaces. It might be more obvious, but I've, I worked on the. Uh, I didn't actually do any of those in this, but I worked on these, from the uh, Lost. Uh, what was it called? Lost. Where is it? It's not even there. I got one more box somewhere here. But yeah, there's another uh, Warhammer Underworlds box. Lost. No, not Lost Patrol. Um, and uh, these I actually did Zenithal highlight, but I came in and mostly did a lot of metallic uh, Retributor gold on it, which I love their Retributor gold. Um, literally the best gold I've ever used. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Do these plates have purple on them? Sure looks like it on their legs. And that makes sense, right? Mm, it already looks pretty good. Like, that's that's how fast and easy contrast paint is. Um, now, I have a little moisture in my brush. I don't feel that that's a bad thing. So I may do the method I was doing with Candice. I thought that was pretty cool. That was for, um, we did that for Nemesis, which kind of is like aliens, you know, and these are kind of like aliens. Um, the interesting thing is like their guns are organic here and stuff like that. <clears throat> I don't know a lot of lore about the Tyranids, I I need to actually, I don't really want to buy the uh, um, Leviathan. I mean, that's just a lot more minis. And I'm really trying to slow down on it. <clears throat> that looks cool. And that's basic, right? We haven't even done anything to like bring that out. Um, so we can do some dry brushing. We can also do some little line work on it to try to pump it up. This is, it seems like in the photographs. Now, this is printed in a book. I don't know that it matches. This is slightly a more purple color, and it's more of a kind of a little bit more deeper red kind of going on it. But this will be fine. Let's do the other guys as well, make sure we're doing. Oh, we didn't do their head yet. Let's do the head. But you can see, you can get pretty far pretty quickly. and it looks awesome already. You don't even have to go crazy on getting the, um, this is just literally putting it on and not sweating it. Does that go all the way to the tip? Sure it does. Now you want to, 
I don't know if it's really as important with these minis, um, but you want to not let the pool up the pooled up paint sit. Now I've got some right here. Uh, also, don't touch it once it starts to um, cure, because uh, it starts to gel, and you would now you might not notice it on these surfaces. Again, this is kind of an organic, crazy. Uh, the armor is would conceal a lot of your mistakes, I think. But I'm going to try not to foul it up. So there we go. I think that is all that I can see of these. Now, they do some really interesting stuff on the black, but I'm going to try to use that um, Basiliconum Gray, one of my favorite kind of black grays. It's really strong. It's very strange. It looks, it works great for leather, um, works great for uh, all kinds of stuff. So let's see here. I use it kind of more than any other paint because almost every mini I do has some of that on it. Um, I'm not sure. Are these the same at all? No, nope, they're different. Or no, are they? Yeah, they're different. Which is cool, right? They used to, I remember like in the old ones, they were many of the same poses. The things started to change, at least when I, when I was paying attention, during the era of the Space uh, Hulk. That whole, you know, every unit was different in that set, which was really great. Uh, you know, that's a mood game anyway, right? You, I think every mini was different. Uh, because there was definitely some, some hero kind of uh, sculpts in there. This brush is a little wet, but it's okay. I feel, I mean, the, the desk is not organized, <laughs> completely organized, but I feel like there's more space here. I feel much better. Um, one of the cool things, you know, I mean, I think, I don't know exactly, you know, these beings, I, from what I know about them in the game, they basically wipe a planet of its bio content clean. I don't know if they're absorbing it into their, you know, like maybe the, the um, alien xenomorphs do, where they basically create new ones from those uh, organic beings that they impregnate or whatever. I never saw, I was reading, uh, actually I was watching a YouTube video, two YouTube videos about Prometheus. I never watched it. Nikki actually watched it. She was pretty frustrated with it. I mean, she likes it, but she was frustrated with it and like wasn't, said I wouldn't appreciate it. I'm sorry, that's probably not in focus. Um, but uh, they were talking about like what the game, what the, the movie was about. And um, I, was intrigued because I don't know anything about it. I mean, I know a tiny bit about it. Nikki was frustrated with like a lot of things that they were talking about in the show, uh, in the ep uh, episodes. I can't remember who it was. One of them was Red Lantern Media, which was funny because it was just a little, it actually started me down the uh, semi rabbit hole there. That's why I watched another video. But their video was asking these questions and then at the very end, one of the other uh, folks came in and said, do you want to go see Prometheus? And they're like, what's Prometheus? So it's like, were they talking about that um, game or uh, that movie or not? Now, is that, I wish I could see those. I guess it's black. So they have the same kind of armor, oops, on these uh, pieces of the gun, or at least appear to be similar. I mean, these are supposed to be organic, I imagine. So, but they're, I mean, you can do whatever you want. I'm following their, their design here. Um, but really, you can do whatever you want on these minis. You have fun. Choose your color schemes. Uh, one of my favorite things I've been watching lately is um, Louise Sudgeon. She's a former GW uh, host and painter. She was. I never watched. Um, I never signed up for Warhammer uh, Plus. Uh, I would like. To, I actually have thought about it because I'd like to see some of the stuff that they're doing with it. But I've watched plenty of their stuff on YouTube. Um, I watched Duncan uh, Rhodes and um, Dave Peach, Peachy. Uh, he's on another thing now called The Painting Phase, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, and uh, she does, Louise, uh, her, her channel's called Rogue Hobbies. Um, she does like these great, super bright schemes 
and they're fun. I mean, I think that's a really fun idea. Um, and it really, I mean, you know, obviously it appeals to Nikki because uh, <clears throat> she likes color, as do I. And uh, it's pretty neato to see these types of schemes. We looked at one of her, uh, Louise's stuff that was in um, Warhammer World, which I've never been to in the UK. Uh, I would like to go someday to do that too. Uh, we have gone to a Warhammer game day back in 2002, maybe, or three. Uh, they had it out here in Los Angeles area, uh, out in um, Ontario, and it was really fun. We had a great time. Come on, focus. Uh, we had a great time, and uh, it was neat. Like, Nikki was into the vampire counts at the time, and she met some folks that had worked on that, um, and that was really awesome fun event. I would love to go to their uh, events that they have, but they're mostly in, I think, all of them. You can go to stuff here in the U.S. that has some GW-related things happening, but um, they just do the days in uh, the U.K. now, and I think they're in Birmingham, but I don't know. But I'd like to do that, too. I've seen some footage and stuff from those, and those seem fun. Uh, a little bit far to go do something like that, but if I were to loop in a visit to Warhammer World, that would be fun. I like looking at the painted dioramas. I've never seen the it, it extent, you know, I've seen lots of photos of this extensive stuff at, at Warhammer World, but it'd be fun. They've done a couple of, uh, I'm not that level of uh, channel, but they've done some events where they've had people come where they showed them the new uh, contrast paints and things like that. And that's, you know, to explain how the stuff works. I, I, my crazy thing was I would be talking to the uh, head of the paint department because this is just, I like to learn about like what they do on these kinds of things. And this is neat stuff. Like ultimately I'm, it has kind of reinvigorated my painting. Um, Cause you can see I can paint pretty well. Um, I am not at super fast, but I'm, you know, okay, and this stuff really accelerates my uh, speed, and I f I'm happy with the results. Sometimes, because I'm using the, the um, Zenithal highlighting method, sometimes I'm a little too dark. That's why I like to uh, put a little bit more brightness onto the faces and things like that, where I want them to be focus your attention on. And, you know, the funny thing is, is I'm doing that, like, on the Marvel United minis and those minis have some of the biggest faces I've ever painted and I love it because I'm like doing eyes and things like that which I no don't normally spend that kind of effort on uh, but I've been painting them a little too dark and so um, that's a little frustrating but I also just kind of who cares uh, you know I mean you want to have fun with this stuff people are all anytime we play any of the games with any of the painted minis everybody's very excited to see them um, so just get out there and get started, you know I mean? It really isn't a big deal. Um, these are kind of interesting to paint, though, I'll tell you. They're not, you know, it's just the mass amount of units that you need to play um, standard Warhammer. Uh, I don't know if they have any, uh, like, kill team with, I don't imagine they have kill team with Tyranids. I have not noticed that, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. That's cool. So now I got the legs, the thighs, thigh, thigh bones or whatever connected to the shin bone, knee bone. But we have a friend visiting from the UK starting on Saturday. I'm not sure how much time he's going to spend with us, but he's going to stay with us, and we just haven't... This is one thing we've been working on, like trying to get things organized, because uh, too many games. We have a lot of games, and we need to send some back to the BGG library for BGGCon. So we've been dealing with that. 
and really worked on that yesterday a lot, and it was a little bit much. I'm not in focus here. Um, but it's okay. We, uh, the other issue is we also send stuff back for charity. We have a uh, charity sale in spring. We just had one in May. And we send some games for that as well. And we'll probably group those in as well. And they can make a decision on what they want to do. Because we actually borrow games from the library to feature them on the show. And um, some of them we do and some of them we don't. And we need to actually get to that to make some decisions. Because they do need some of these games for the... Um, for the library in November. And then some of them will go to the charity, which is fantastic. It's called Cafe Momentum, and it helps at-risk kids in the Dallas area and other areas now. They are, they've got a program with the uh, NFL. Um, Scott's wife, Michelle, had worked with that gr uh, group uh, in her work as a um, and as an attorney. And um, it's pretty awesome. It's a awesome. I've never actually been to the restaurant. Scott and Michelle have been, and others have been, and they said it is really great, and it gives kids a, it trains them so that they know how to work in a restaurant, like in every position, and uh, it's pretty good, I guess. It's um, so we love. I mean, I've uh, wanted some place to give the games we are done with, or we haven't. You know, Nikki and I have a massive collection and it, I find you know of course I find it hard to get rid of this stuff because um, I, I love it all uh, there's I, I almost love every game for some some reason you know I mean you can't it's bad like if you're that person then you can't get rid of games I'm not like a OCD person in that regard but like I appreciate many games just for their art and oops not in focus again and that is I love it. I mean, I love some games. They are so much into the uh, to the art that I forget about what the game is. Um, let's see here. Something is not right. Let me check. Um, boy, I'm not used to using a Mac. I'll tell you that. Okay, I'm on the old chat. Here you go. So let me pop it out again. It's weird. Why would that do that? Um, Hey, there we go. Bunch of people talking. <laughs> Sorry about that. I will, if you're still here, I'll mention what I see here. I knew that it was like, there's no way there's nobody talking. Um, let's go over the chat here real quick. Is there something wrong with the, uh, wow, can I not see the other ones? Green flicker and intermittent freeze on desk cam. Okay, let me check that out. Uh, eh, not sure about expanding your channel. Uh, hey, we got a, okay, let's see, uh, tips for expanding, so I've, let me see if the green is like, I don't see it here, I wonder if it's still doing it, um, of course it's delayed, I can't really tell, um, but these games, these minis are from the Space Marine, uh, they're from this here, the Space Marine, uh, board game, the board game from uh, Warhammer just came out, uh, from uh, Games Workshop, came out just three weeks ago or so. Um, you can play Kill Team with Tyranids while they don't have a set made up for it. it. The lists to build an army are in the Kill Team compendium. Awesome. Nottingham, not Brigham. Yes, but I thought that the uh, their games event was in Birmingham. I could be wrong. Uh, I've never been to that one, but I know they are in Nottingham. That's where uh, let me go see if it's flickering. I'll be right back, but I can talk to you. But uh, I know they're in Nottingham. I mean, I've always, the uh, Warhammer World's there. I'd love to, to go, as I said. That would be awesome. Lots of things to see. And I love, 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 love seeing pa really well painted minis. Nikki and I, when we first went to that event in Ontario, it was pretty amazing. I don't see any flicker here. I wonder if it's resolved itself. Huh. Well, let me know if, I, now that I have the chat going, let me know if you see it again. Uh, as far as building your channel, though, the only thing I can recommend, because, you know, we've, we're not like a massive, BGG's not a massive channel, but we've just diligently done content 
Uh, initially, when I wasn't working full time with BG, I, BGG, I worked. Uh, we put out an episode every two weeks, and then I think I still continued to do every two weeks for a little while. And then once we got Derek Porter as our editor, we switched to doing two once every week, and it's pretty good. I mean, people, you'll see how quickly folks will watch your videos when they know to expect them. Uh, I mean, obviously, we have the benefit of being part of BGG, so we've had, I mean, but when we started doing, um, when we started doing uh, Game Night, there was only about 4,500 maybe uh, subscribers to our channel on YouTube. And I know a lot of it is because we've just con continued to do content. Now there's other things we've done. We used to do our live streams on this channel uh, for, um, Spiel and Gen Con, which I loved doing those, but it is the Scott's uh, issue is it's just a lot of effort for not a lot of return. Um, why am I looking at my phone? Oh, I was just going to look up the video, but I don't need to. Uh, today we put out our video for uh, Zhao Scharf or Pick a Pepper, which is from. Uh, uh, Amigo, fun game, and uh, you know, it's not something that everybody's going to want to see, but uh, it has been doing pretty good views. So I'm going to use, I think, the uh, Seraphim Sepia, which is a shade. This is one of the things. They actually sent me all the new shades and all of the new, the second series of contrast paints. I was real, I think it was 32 in the very first set, and I have them. No, I don't have all of them. I have most of them. Uh, I was buying them as I needed them. I'm kind of, I think it's actually probably a good idea not to buy like a giant set of paints. Unless you just know that you're that person and you love doing it. Um, but I feel you end up with a lot of paints you won't use. If you buy them as you need them, number one, I think you'll spend less money. And you... Um, also, just don't build up. I mean, I, for a while there, I, I gave a whole bunch of older paints that I had that were still good to a friend's daughter who was painting with uh, her friend. And I see a bunch of weird stuff here. Uh, I don't know what any of that means. Uh, the only event I can think of in Birmingham is UK Games Expo. Yeah, that's true. That might be what I'm confusing it with. Uh, Manchester. Okay, there you go. Manchester. Yeah, I want to go. To, so it's Warhammer Fest. Thanks, Dave's Traveling. I would love to go to that. I, I've thought about, um, I mean, I've watched a lot of folks on YouTube. I, when um, when uh, Vincent Venturella went um, to submit a mini that he had done, uh, that was really awesome. You know what I mean? It's like, and I'm not that level, obviously. I'll never be that. that kind of, I don't have that kind of uh, drive uh, as far as painting minis. I love it, but I just, I don't have that much focus. It looks like there's some purple on these elbows. Again, do what you want to do. Don't worry about it. I'm going to try to do this with the wash. You know, I wonder if we use, no, we use this. So his hand is still bone. It looks like the magazine might be bone, but I'm going to do something different with that. I'm sorry you guys can't see this. Um, so it was in Manchester. Interesting. I would love to go. Someday we will. We haven't been to the UK for a little while. I think the last time we went was 2017. Um, we had been a couple of times. I, I do love it. It's such a great... And, you know, to see... You know, you, you go to places in the United States and you see something old as far as not ancient, but something man-made, and it's, you know, 200-something years old. You go to Europe. When I was in um, college, I went to... Uh, I went to um, uh, Oxford to go to school for a summer, and it was, you know, like a university. I was at UCLA, a university thing, and that was really fun. And the I was in a modern uh, dormitory, but my friend, uh, well, from class, was in a ancient, like, uh, cloister 
you know, monastery thingy, part, uh, part of our campus. And that was awesome. Uh, and he, uh, it was just different, you know, very, very fun and cool. So uh, it's just awesome. I mean, I think it was a thousand years old or something like that, or gosh, maybe 900 years old or something. It was crazy. Um, now, I'm sure I didn't really spend a lot of time in there, but uh, the little bit of time that I was in there, it was um, probably um, much, much more modern. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, not probably, definitely. Uh, it wouldn't be fun to be in an ancient uh, building, but it was cool. And, it, you know, like the main clock tower there was old and it was really cool. Hey, tiny clans. Um, but yeah, it'd be fun. I, I you know, I, I like to see the old stuff. We, it's one of the things when we go to France and, um, Germany, although we have not gone up into, Nikki says we did more in that, uh, in the castle at, uh, castle, cathedral at, uh, in, um, Cologne. I don't really remember seeing much there. We might have gone inside to see a little bit, but we definitely didn't climb up to the top. And those are the kinds of things I like to do. We went to a place in Denmark, and uh, I, I think we were at like the castle from Hamlet. I don't even remember the name of it, but um, I get to, I go and walk to the top. I go to the top with Nikki and Scott and Michelle, they're like, I don't know if I want to walk up there. I go in, I go all the way to the top, I look around I'm like, oh, this is amazing, and I run back down, and it's a long way, and uh, told Scott and Michelle they needed to go up, and it was amazing. It was a real beautiful view and ancient castle, you know, really awesome. Uh, makes that fun stuff. But yeah, I can see the chat a little bit better, which is nice. That I have two, both the YouTube and the Twitch chats open here, and you can see what's going on. Come on, focus in. But uh, Manchester, I'm not even sure. I mean, I know that's north. I believe <laughs> I know that it's north. I believe it is north. Um, the furthest I went to. As I said, I went to Oxford. I think the furthest I remember going to was Chatsworth to see, oh, what was the name of that castle? And it was cool. I went with my, I read it. So when I went to study in uh, Oxford, I was studying architecture. And uh, I went to see what they called the country. Mostly what I was looking at was the country house stuff that was, um, you know, like landed people would build these amazing homes that were really kind of castles. Because Blenheim, which is um, a house where uh, Churchill's family's uh, from, uh, I believe it was Churchill, now that I think about it. What paint am I using? I am using uh, contrast paint. I'm using the War, uh, Stephen, I'm using Warhammer's uh, contrast paint. So this one here right now is, uh, the, fur the purple was the uh, contrast Luxian purple. And then right now I'm actually using a shade to do the bone, uh, the bone parts, which I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to put the shade on. Actually, I'm not done with this. I'm going to put the shade on and then dry brush some bone over it. It's something that I did with Candace. Now, again, I probably shouldn't have painted the purple, um, but I will tell you what, I will do my best to try to not make a mess of it. And then if I do, just put some more purple, because it will now be a light color. Just put some more purple of it over it, and it will give it some interesting detail. Now, that's... I generally tight, like to work inside out, so I would work, hey, I didn't do the other side of his face. Um, I would do that part first, and then maybe the, the black talons and the purple. Uh, but I'm gonna go for it here and do something different. Um, I like to work outside of my comfort area, area of comfort. Um, and you know, I don't really mind these colors actually getting on, like the, the shade getting on the, um, purple so much because it brings them together. It is kind of like, you know, these two colors are strong. But, you know, if you look at the picture here of what I'm looking at, 
these bones are their bone stuff is very white um, or their limbs I don't know that they're bones but I'm gonna do something like that with the dry brush I wish I had Candace's here because it turned out really great we did a lot of you know it was on the fly I didn't really think about what I was gonna do I didn't even know what mini we were gonna do and so we went crazy and had a great time on it and I hope Candace will continue painting she has a lot of nemesis stuff that she wants to paint I was just one of the things I was like should we worry about matching what you've already got in the standard because this was a nemesis expansion um, and uh, she was like no it you know these are different like a different planet I think they're supposed to be from Mars so she was like let's do something different with them and I think that's really cool okay now I must let that dry a while so I might do some more stuff on this um, that way but let's do the next one it, you can see it's not that hard to actually work in series on these types of things um, and I'm just winging it you know I don't really hey you know what that tail is that tail white it is so this is some sort of flesh it is not bone uh, they just got a pale flesh again this is like I believe they might have done this kind of scheme for a while but this is the Leviathan uh, scheme that they have going on as I say the the colors in the uh, introductory set were those five which included this purple Nagareth Knight and then this Wraith Bone which I will be using here in a bit um, and then this is the McRag Blue which you use for your marine but you can use it on these two I've seen actually uh, Tyrion is with blue uh, armor and then the gold here Balthasar Gold which is really kind of a copper and then this base Abaddon, Abaddon or Abaddon Black um, I gotta tell you Stephen I love contrast paints I love them they your work moves much quicker they dry quick well acrylics dry quickly you don't have to worry about it too much um, but you know the doing the shading is uh, an issue you know like it's not an issue it's just it's it's more work you've got to know what you're doing and you get better doing that kind of stuff by you know your skill gets better as you just do them which is fine um, I had a friend Alf that was just the most phenomenal painter I, I didn't really learn enough from him I I wished I had because he is really a great painter he did um, he did his dark angels when I was around him and I just was completely knocked out about how great they were um, and you know I was trying to get better like that uh, and I got pretty good but I feel like these this has really invigorated my interest in painting the contrast paints uh, I was very interested into them when I heard about them uh, coming because I knew I understood what it was I already basically kind of had techniques like that with the inks um, I didn't think about the Zenithal thing until I saw Adam uh, from Tabletop Minions do it on our game night uh, not game night board game geek stream for in 2020 in November we had a live uh, online event for our con since we couldn't get together and Adam did I believe we had him do uh, the it was we, we had him do uh, Hulk and one other figure on a couple days of streaming which is fantastic and um, I'm like I really like how this works because you know his thing is is these paints are really kind of designed for this stuff I mean they're really designed to just put them over a light um, undercoat and they look great as I said I showed this miniature earlier this is the, literally the one of the first if not the first one that I painted and this was entirely primed with white and I did wet blending you know because these paints are not that fast and they're very wet so I did wet blending for this like tabard that it has here and um, the sword I did kind of like a non-metallic metal thing with uh, I don't even know if I used because I've done two of these I'm not certain if I used the uh, apothecary white on this at that time I might have one of the two I did do it on um, and you know apothecary white's kind of a gray but uh, it turned out really well and I think that you can get a lot of you get a lot of stuff hey River Song 3042 um, thanks for joining us you can get a, you can make a lot of progress and you can have minis painted right it's everybody's excited to have mini painted miniatures on the table nobody is uh, disappointed uh, it's much more disappointing to have the gray miniatures um, and this is you know I believe Games Workshop really needed this like they 
we're trying to help people get into because you know their their business is really miniatures even though they have some fun games um, but they were trying to get people into the hobby and uh, ooh, I got some paint on that which won't be a problem because it's going to be black or or the contrast uh, the basiliconum gray contrast paint um, but yeah you can you know they want people to encourage people to paint and I know that these paints are not exactly cheap they're like 780 a bottle um, but they last a long time for me they have anyway I'm not painting massive armies of stuff right now uh, I've never really I did do uh, a um, ne Necron Necron army and I did a uh, because I, when I, I, when I was in, first into the hobby, I, they introduced the Necrons. I've always called them Necrons. Um, and uh, I bought the box. So they used to do these big army boxes. As a matter of fact, I can look up now that it's right here. Um, let's see what year that is. Um, they used to do like a large box with quite a few units. Does it have a copyright date? 2002. So there you go. That's when I was into the hobby. Um, and they would introduce them, and I would always buy. Well, I wouldn't always buy them, but I bought a few of them. I've got the Tau. I never did any of the Tau, and the Crute, I think, is what they were called. And then they had the Necrons, and I think I got a Black Templar army. Uh, so that would have been. It's weird because I, I think Third Edition is older. Does it have a date visible now? I don't know when Third Edition actually was, but. Um, uh, Improving with acrylics at the end of the day, it's just exhausted process, and I can't, I barely get anywhere. Stephen, it's part of my issue with it, and I feel your in, your standard acrylic technique actually improves as you do this because you use some of that stuff on these miniatures, and you know, I mean, as it is right now, this isn't far away from being ready to just play with, right? If I did the black on the this armor for his um, uh, the weapon, and then I did some of the the talons and the hoofs. Uh, with uh, the hooves with the black then you know you're ready to go and they look fantastic and you know I've just done three and I don't, I don't know exactly how long I've been going but probably about an hour um, maybe a little bit more I had so many technical problems at the beginning and it's just great I mean I can't wait to actually try so I bought some new uh, dry brushes but I think I'll use the little small one I have from I do have uh, this little guy here that will probably do a pretty good job and then I have this um, this is just a makeup brush. Um, a friend of mine recommended, you know, she said these are not really great for paint, uh, for actual makeup, although I think Nikki uses some stuff like this. Um, but they work pretty great as a dry brush, so we'll try them once this uh, undercoating of the, uh, the uh, tan, what I'm using here is a seraphim sepia, dries. And then uh, we'll see what it does. I'm going to try really hard to... Actually, I might use this one. So this is a new Army Painter dry brush. Uh, not new. I mean, it's new to me. Um, I might use this one because I would have a little bit more control in here on this. So we will see here. But um, I just decided to try them. I'm, all, I'm a goofball. I buy lots of uh, uh, paints and airbrushes and stuff just to like see how good they are for people. Because I actually used... Um, uh, I used a the little tiny compressor that I bought. So I bought an airbrush and a compressor for sixty dollars. I think it was as, it's as low as that. This has actually been sitting on here the whole time, um, but it it works pretty great. Uh, it does not put out a lot of air pressure. They claim thirty five. Thirty five should be able any, to do any airbrush. I'm not hundred percent sure. I've not used it on my. I have an old badger that my parents gave me, airbrush, that they gave me when I was 12 or 13, I believe. Um, maybe even earlier than that, because I was, uh, <clears throat> when I was in art, doing art stuff in high school and college, I, I used a lot of airbrush stuff. And um, I, this $60, 60 to $70 um, cheap at Maker Brushes, there you go. That's what I'm doing, uh, Dave's Traveling. These are, these are from e.l.f., and they're great. I only have two sizes, though. That's my big problem. And that's why I ended up buying this other one set. So this is the Ultimate Blending. Sorry, you can't see it. Um, this is the Ultimate Blending. This was $4, $4.50 maybe. 
I don't remember. I might have bought this at the at uh, Target. So the little small one, the eye contour brush. Um, they were not expensive. These are not terribly expensive either. These cost me twenty dollars, um, and they give you three. And I was looking at the Artist Opus ones, right? Like they have some really great stuff. And I, because I, the dry brush guy on there is lots of great techniques. They use a thing called a dry brush palette to actually get the paint down. They do a thing where it's the brush is damp, which I've never done any of that still. But I needed a couple smaller sizes between the two extremes that I have. So I thought, oh, you know what? I'll just get this. I should have probably bought just some more makeup dry brush because they're great. Seriously, don't spend a lot of money. I, the, the paint brushes I'm using now cost, for, I think as much as I paid is $39, maybe $42. And then I got a second batch for $25 from Amazon. This is, I believe, a British company, but these are not from Britain yet. No, these are Indiana. Oh, no, this is manufactured by, I don't know. Anyway, I thought they were British. Who knows? Um, these are cheap. You get 144 brushes. They work pretty great for me. I mean, I know some people use a little bit better golden tacklons, but these are they're awesome, and I don't worry. I'm literally on the second brush of this size. Um, I don't have my other cup wet, but you know they make they keep a great point for a while. Um, and to me, I I would rather just feel like oh okay I can just toss this now. I make sure I don't even toss them. I use the brushes for something else, either basing or something like that. Something where I'm poking at it a lot because that's what really kills the brushes. Um, but anyway. Uh, I don't feel you should spend a lot of money, uh, especially if you know, don't know that you uh, will enjoy painting a lot. So if you put a little bit of money into it and buy like the color, some base, you know, start with whatever you're going to paint. A lot of people just recommending. I mean, I love painting stuff in the board games. Lots of great minis in these games lately. Um, as I said, I've been painting the Marvel United stuff, and I bought a box of. I actually bought, you know, I backed the Kickstarter for Marvel United initially, well, Focus. Um, but I also bought a, uh, well, I, there was a $14 set, but I didn't actually buy it. I think you, it's been as low as $9 for 10 miniatures. And they're very large, so they're, they're good for people to just get started on it. Um, you know, because it's, it's, they're big. Actually, let me just show you one here. So this is Jessica Jones, I guess her name is. Look how big that is, but look at her face. This is easy to get started on, and you can do like the eyes and stuff like that. Let me show you, do I have one completed here? Um, you know, it's, it, there's lots of ways to get in, and GW has tons of great stuff now, where, oh, I have lots of painted minis right here. Um, let me show you like my favorite one. Well, one of my favorite ones. This is Shuri from Black Panther. And look how cool she is. It's lots of big details. If you're getting started, this is the kind of thing. Now, this one came, I think, in the expansion, you know, like the stretch goals box. But the minis, uh, let's look at um, uh, Black Widow. Now, I put more effort into her face where I think I, dry br I airbrushed it, and then I was not happy about how dark she was. So I, I actually just painted flesh tone on it, I think, and then, or maybe the white, and then did the uh, skin. So this is, that's what's, a, what's amazing. Uh, this is the GW paints. So this is the same flesh color between these two. You just use the contrast medium to thin it out. And I generally don't, I've actually been putting like the purple on here at the strongest intensity. I don't normally do that. You use what you call technical medium to thin it out, to lessen the intensity of the color, and look at the difference, right? These are both the same flesh tone, and they turned out amazing. And both of them look really, really cool. Um, I feel, that's what I love about, you know, there's, I, I, I'm not, uh, G, uh, excuse me, Army Painter has their contrast, uh, what do they call speed paint medium. Um, and, you know, it's the same idea. And it works pretty phenomenally, right? The, I was actually disappointed with the flesh tone when I first bought the paints. And I found out, oh, I went, actually went to the store. So this is 2019. I went to the store and, 
I'm like, what do you get for flesh? This is crazy. They don't have a flesh color. And then I looked at the display and they had it showing in the range of intensity from the contrast medium. I'm like, oh, that is flesh tone. That's exactly what I need. And uh, I happily bought it and it worked great. I've really learned a lot. And I actually generally, when I'm working with the, Z uh, the Zenithal highlighting, you don't need to do the shading like you uh, do with um, when you do the white. Because when you do the un white undercoat, you need the shading from, well, it's not in focus. Um, you need the shading from the uh, paint. When you put it on, you let it, s you, you put it on pretty thick, like you saw me doing on the purple. And um, I just put it on the, the gun. It won't matter probably, but I'm going to take it off here. Um, on the, the black armor there, you know, the black, ar uh, what do they call it? I know there's a name for this uh, type of armor. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can, you know, you can do a lot of stuff with just, that's why I say buy a few paints, right? Just get what you need for you to the project you're working on and then buy more as you need them. Uh, definitely GW does not sell, I don't think they sell contrast in a kit. They've done kits for colors, like small, you can get like a set that will be for a specific project. Uh, they definitely, I think Vallejo does some with, um, with, uh, and these are not, Vallejo has their own uh, fast paint called Express Paint, I think. I have not, I've not even seen those in real life yet. I've only ever seen videos on YouTube. Um, but uh, Vallejo and Army Painter, I think, do sets for, uh, uh, actually, I'm pretty certain it's Army Painter. I know, I really thought it was Vallejo for the D&D minis that uh, um, WizKids does. Uh, so, you know, you can buy a set, but I still feel like, I mean, those are not cheap. You know, they're not that inexpensive. So I feel like if you get the colors you need um, to start to determine, like, what you want to do, and if you're enjoying it, then you won't go too crazy, and you... Uh, you just can build your, your collection of colors as you go. Now, like I said, um, Chitlin, there we go. That's not, Chitin, that sounds right. Uh, uh, Chitlin, that's some, the old uh, entertainment circuit in the South. Anyway, um, and that might be food related, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not that hard to get nice results. Um, we'll see how the dry brushing does. I'm eager to try some here. So this is pretty much covered. Let me make sure. Actually, I did not get the other side of the gun. I really need to read up on this. I don't know anything about these units. I just like them. They look cool. I mean, the really giant units look amazing. I would like to... I mean, that's my problem. I cannot buy any more big sets of stuff. Um, I do. I, I think the last batch of stuff I did buy from GW in their sets was like, so I bought that old Black Templar Army, and then I bought the new one, which I don't even think is that great. I think their Battle Force or whatever they call it is a better set. As a matter of fact, I know it has like for the Black Templar, it has like upgrade bits and that some really great upgrade bits, uh, which is not exactly cheap. Um, so one of these should be dry. Let's see what we got here. That looks probably dry. I mean, we worked pretty fast with Candace and I, so you don't have to be too delicate with this. So let's get some brown, or this flesh tone. So let me shake this up really well. I don't have a mixing ball in here like I was talking about. I really don't know where I put that stuff. I, I'm missing a lens cap, all these little things. I. Okay, so I'm going to do it in this paint cup, like I was talking about earlier. Put a little bit in there. And then I will try the small makeup brush. I have not opened this yet. This does not seem like it's very well stirred. Let's go a little more. I haven't, I, I, I haven't really, I mean, I buy GW stuff all the time. I love the 
as I said, I love the Retributor armor. Um, it is literally one of the best golds I've ever painted. Uh, Pro Acryl has a pretty great one called Rich Gold. Um, I think it's sort of like, where's that other miniature? Is it here somewhere? Um, back in the day, I did uh, Eldar, as they call them Eldari now. Uh, and I used Rich Shining Gold was my color. Oh my gosh, I love that color. And it's, all of these are sort of a version of that. But I think Retributor Armor is like the best one I've seen. Uh, a Flesh Borer, which shoots beetles and dig at their enemies. Oh my gosh, David. So you're helping me out here. I need to learn how to do all that, uh, read all that. I, I need to read all that stuff. I don't know enough about it, but I don't really need to know, but I love it. I love the lore. I've read some of the books. Um, so, it's in there. Small amount of paint. The, with dry brushing, what you're doing is, and you can see it like settles back in. Um, I don't want it to be too thin. Maybe GW might be a little too thin to do the dry brushing. I used, uh, with Candace, I think we used um, the old paint right here. So I'll show you this. This is what, these were manufactured. I think the same people are now making the paint for GW. But this is nitro. This is old. Uh, made in Britain. I'm pretty dang sure it's HMG, I think is who does the paints now. Um, and these are in the old bottles. This is the old bottles that GW used to use. So this is this similar color, right? A little bit, I like this actually, the Wraithbone color, a little bit more. I think I used, I couldn't get Wraithbone under coat. I don't know if they, I think they still sell that uh, spray can, but they don't sell the gray that I have. I actually have the paint um, here somewhere that is uh, uh, like Codex gray or something like that. Uh, so I bought the, the nice thing about the GW stuff is you can buy the color and then the paint. Right, you can buy the spray can and the paint. You can also literally just, spray cans are great. They're just expensive, you know, and you, a little kind of messy. Let's see here. Where is the air, uh, the dry brush? Once again, put it away. Okay, which is good. So what you do, now I'm doing this the way I've always done it, which is, I guess, not the real way you should do it because um, it dries it out a lot. But we did this with Candace the other day. We didn't uh, do cra too crazy. But you're, you get the paint on your brush. Now, there's, I saw something else about a dry brush method I never knew anything about where it's kind of really kind of wet. But, um, but the way it was being put on was different, so I'm not sure. Uh, but that's a pretty good dollop of paint. But what's going to happen is I'm going to put it on the paper till there's almost nothing left. I mean, it really, this is still probably too much paint. And there you go. I mean, there's barely anything. So let's see what this does. Now, this isn't on a dark surface, so you're not that dark of a surface. So you're not necessarily going to see too much of a change. But you can see already it's, it's bringing out the bone thing, right? What, oh, not necessarily bone. Now, there's some on the purple. But again, I'm not going to worry about it. But look, it's really putting a lot on. Um, now, again, probably should paint the, this stuff first before doing the purple. But who cares? You can, I think you can get away with a lot of stuff. It, you, don't, you can do whatever you want. Just have fun. Uh, but this method is pretty good. And it... I mean, you need kind of like the edge. The edge is like lightened up on the... Uh, the what do we call it again? Chitin. So there's a lot of uh, stuff going on the on those shins, or the thighs, excuse me. But it's okay, because I'm going to put a little bit more color on it, and it will probably give me some light. It's already, I mean, if you look at the pictures, they do are doing this kind of streaking kind of effect on the edges here already. Like here, let's just do a little bit for the sake of showing it. I mean, really, I think we should just go with this. It looks pretty awesome. Um, and not worry about it. But look what that's doing, right? Already it's quite a bit different. Now, I honestly probably should have done the talons and the armor on the gun here. What do you call it? Flesh borer. That sounds right. I've, I know I've read some stuff on this, but never a lot. Um, but look how different it already looks. I want to put a little bit more on their hand. 
Hmm. Focus. I mean, look at that. That already looks pretty amazing. Like, I would like that on the table. Now, you can go back and do some more wash over things. Like, for example, if I'm not happy with how in light the uh, purple has gotten, and it is a little light. Um, I mean, I am directly brushing on it, so that's going to do that. Uh, I can put a thinned down version of the, the contrast paint or a shade on it, and it will, wow, this is still wet. So I'm probably a little, see, notice here it's a little damp here. I'm going to let that go a little bit longer, but let's get to the other one. Um, you definitely don't want to do this stuff while it's wet. Uh, it's not a really a big deal, but, but you can see I put just the tiniest amount of paint in the palette, and I'm, I mean, look how much is coming off on the, uh, on the uh, paper. It's, uh, I use napkins and paper towels. We go to restaurants all the time, and they tend to put on so many napkins in, on the table. This is like going to a fast food place. And um, I just keep them <laughs> because it's like nobody's going to use them with everybody being paranoid about uh, the germs and stuff. So I just save them for this kind of stuff. But one of the methods that you, with um, Artis Opus and I'm sure others are advocating about dry brushing, is you have some moisture in your brush before you, and you mostly blot it out, but before you take off the paint, and then um, uh, then you put the paint on and then you take it off with a pal So I'll show you what I'm using. Is it here? Yeah. So I made this on the laser cutter. This is essentially sort of like a dry brush palette. I just, so these are like tiles for, and you can see I used it. I don't remember what I did on that. Um, it might have been Iron Man, I think maybe I did this with, with the, uh, so I did this. Let's see if I can find it here. Um, so I, I, what, I got another set. Scott gave me another, he had another in the lib uh, in his library. Um, he had a second set of uh, uh, Marvel United base set. So this is the first one I did, and it's pretty good. I, you know, I was figuring some stuff out, but it, I'm not real satisfied with the mask. Um, and that was using the only yellow I felt that they had at the time, which was called Iandin Yellow, which is really kind of orange. Um, and it is, like, when you do it. Now, if you use, so this is prior to me, like, doing as much thin version and then building up to it, which probably would have been a lot better. Um, this is pretty yellow when you put the contrast medium in it. But they now have three in the new sets. They have three other pretty great yellows. This one's kind of got, got green quality. This is the Iron Jaws yellow. Um, but then this one here looks like a single pigment Imperial Fist. I can't focus on that. Um, and then this other one, Bad Moon Yellow, which actually looks pretty great too. So they have more yellows now. But I wasn't really happy, so I decided to try this. Now, it's not exactly great either, but what I did on this one is I, um, it's focusing on that. What I did on this one was I dry brushed the whole thing except for the base with metallic paints. So I did the same idea for a Zenithal highlighting, um, but I used metallic. So I used a, I'm pretty sure I just used this chain mail, and then I used a, uh, a metallic medium from the Yeho that I've had for a while uh, that is literally like the like irid um, what would you call it like a pearl color um, but I dry that you know I did that on the highlights and then it came out and it looks really cool it's a neat um, a neat metallic color and it's more what I imagined the armor to be like for Iron Man right as he was getting in, in, getting into those other mark versions of the armor uh, and so it was a new technique I tried, and it worked out pretty great. Because uh, I, I was drawing, I was doing all of these. I was doing the main box again with just um, uh, dry brush methods of undercoating. Because you know, not everybody's going to want to buy an airbrush. I don't think everybody should. But uh, you get a lot of, you know, an air. I think airbrushes are really. Uh, wow, that's pretty great. Somehow I said something that would trigger the echo. Um, 
anyway. Uh, I really like the dry brushes, and I think they're the way to go because I don't like using spray cans. I don't like, you know, there it's um, kind of. You must wear a respirator. You should wear a mask when you do airbrush too. But if you are doing acrylics and you're doing it outside, I don't feel it's that much of a risk. Um, I mean, I've done it forever, but it doesn't mean it's good. Um, but you should probably wear a mask. But definitely do it with a lot of ventilation. Um, and if you're going to wear a mask, use a respirator. You know. Um, Anyway, enough of that. So there we go. So now I kind of think I want this to be a little bit brighter again. So what I'm going to do is when they're dry, I mean, they dry very fast. Um, although this guy looks OK. I did dry brush. I think I put this one on a little bit less intense purple. Let's focus here. Um, but let's do some of the other things first. So one of the things they have going on here is like a pink in their elbows and these little, you know, ribs. It, this looks very much like alien, whatever the heck they got going underneath their skin. Let me clean this brush, though. So when you clean a dry brush, there you can't put a lot of, it's going to make a mess if you have a paper, uh, napkin like I'm doing here. Um, you can't put a lot of water in it because uh, the ferrule is not designed for that. I mean, this is to do makeup, which is rel uh, quite dry. Uh, but I've had the best of luck with these and kept cleaning it, and it still seems to work. And again, it's a f probably a $4 brush or a $3 brush at Target. And the one, uh, that other one, the contour one, no, this is the contour one. This is the ultimate blending, was for something on Amazon. They're really great. They really do a good job. I'm eager to try these other ones as well. They're small, but I was going crazy with a bigger one here, slightly bigger. Because um, this, I think, is about the same size, although the ferrule is uh, fatter, but it's the, the brush itself is relatively the same size. But then this is in the, a little bit bigger, right? And then this is gigantic. So I kind of have a good range of brushes now to do, depending on the size of the project I'm working on. Um, anyway, so that's dry, or let's, that's cleanish, and it should be enough. So let's try the contrast. Um, uh, not Abaddon black, that's not contrast. Uh, where is it? Is it underneath? The oh, there's the beads. So these are what I, I bought these from um, Monument Hobbies. They're not very expensive, maybe 50 beads for um, for $2 or something like that. Uh, and then, you know, Army Painter and others sell like stainless steel ball bearings. I'm nervous about those just because, you know, are they really stainless steel? Because if they're in your paint and it's in there a long time, they could corrode and mess up your paint. Uh, I have had an old paint from a manufacturer that had some sort of metal agitator inside of it, and it um, you could probably use beads too, I mean, glass beads, but these don't have anything on them, and they're medical grade glass. Uh, they actually have in their regular, I don't know what's in the standard bottles, what was the yellow here? I have like a transparent yellow, and you can see at the bottom, it looks like it's the green, uh, is that in focus? It is green. So that's one of the green agitator beads. I don't think I put that in. I think that comes, they put a agitator uh, bead in theirs. But I bought their paint bottles, um, just to have some more of their paint bottles. And they have a larger agitator bead, um, which I don't know how good that would be in like the contrast paints, because I actually like the size of the bead and the little ones. But I bought these at Common Ground Hobbies in Dallas. For twelve dollars, so it was, you know, dollar something a bottle, because there's ten. Dollar um, twenty, maybe. Um, but they include an agitator bead in them, and it's pretty big. It's not even coming out of here. Is that right? No, it's there. We go. So it's a lot bigger. Um, let's see. Here's the. I've shown these before. So I'm not certain what the story is on that. Uh, maybe they've changed. I like these little ones though because they kind of are more like the radius um, inside the bottom of these bottles, right? This radius here is closer to that than the bigger ones. Um, anyway, I haven't, I've yet to use these. Uh, and I often, they, you know, I don't do two beads, but I've seen people that do the two beads, uh, two bearings, and or two agitators, let's just say. And um, Seems like it would do a good job, but I they do pretty good job as it is. So let's see this back up. Um, 
Good evening, Beto Carrera. Uh, I'm doing well. You like the game time? Oh, thanks for watching Game Night. Gameplays and miniature painting. Thanks very much. And thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, these are great. And it's not too expensive. And I like glass uh, as far as they're definitely not going to corrode. I actually thought about buying those hematite beads. But they're often beads because they have the hole in them. Um, and I just was like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm not going to bother. Now, I was looking for the contrast basiliconum gray. Oh, and here it is. It hasn't settled. So that that's how long ago do we mix it up? It stayed, hey, time roller. Um, it stayed mixed up quite a bit. So let's, and we're going to do this just straight because this is, it is a dark gray. Um, but we're going to put this on, I don't know what the reason is. I really like this color it is i mean i know that's the reason i'm going to try to find a smaller brush here i don't have a lot of small brushes i have some very small brushes this winsor newton one will do um but i'm going to try to put this on a little bit more delicately and see what these hooves look like here so i kind of want i mean when you put some of these darker colors on None of the, sh barely any of the shading comes through. Hmm. You can see they look pretty great already. Now there was some purple, or no, it was black on their knees. I don't know which guys, is that on their knees or? Sure looks like it on that. Oh, you know what, that's the gun. That is not a knee. That is on the flesh borer, as I've learned. Okay, so the knees are tan. <laughs> tan. Um. Now you see how dark the the hoof already looks. It doesn't really need any more to be super black. I mean, unless you want them to look really oily black or something. But yeah, this is the <clears throat> the new set from the Space Marine game. From you could get it at uh, Barnes and Noble here in the United States. They're often at other retailers, and those games are not terribly expensive. And this one comes with a lot of minis. I don't know for sure what the cost is. I've not seen it. It just came out uh, when I read about these before they asked if I was interested in looking at them. Uh, I was very excited about all of them, particularly there is a um, focus. There is a uh, the combat arena, which is related to Gore Chosen, which is a great game. It's the same system. Uh, has some really great minis. And then they have a Warhammer uh, they have a Warhammer Underworlds base set now, a uh, new base set that they're selling in that retail, which is really kind of exciting. Um, I'm always excited about these. I don't know how much uh, standard folks coming up and picking it up would be interested in doing it, but I really like the idea of it, and it's not expensive to get a bunch of minis and just get started, right, to try it out, because I think those are like maximum sixty dollars but i could be wrong especially this one is really a lot of stuff in it um but uh when you do the total calculation it's quite a bit of uh you know quite a bit of minis so i might come back in and do some later do some white not white but bone straight bone uh highlights on these things on the hooves, hooves. And I definitely want to put a little bit more on the masks, on the face, because I, I want it to be a little bit stronger. But I don't know that it's necessary. If you look at this, it looks pretty great. So there's a little bit of black here. They shoot beetles. Flesh boring beetles. Hmm. 
There's a lot less talons on here than I thought. Is there something on the knee? Doesn't look like it. So I might have to put a little bit of white, but I think we're going to try doing the pink here. What is their tongue? Their tongue's pretty, pretty pink, reddish pink. I don't think they have a lot of pinks in this contrast. Now, again, you mix them and then you get different shades, right? Uh, with the contrast medium or mix paints. I've actually mixed the contrast paints and they work pretty well. The issue is, is if it's multiple colors, um, if it's a multicolor pigment, uh, you might not get the results you want. Oh, here's the uh, Eldar guy I painted. This is one of my earliest ones. And, you know, it's not, there's no shading. I just was doing it. Uh, but that had this shining gold. I loved shining gold. It was really a great color. My first car was like, <laughs> almost like that color. So now I, I painted that white on there and it kind of killed the purple on this. So I might put a little bit more purple on those little teeny dots because I'm crazy. So let's look at these black hooves really quick. Let's, uh, what time is it? It is 7.20. Oh, it's almost time really. I'll, I'll go a little bit longer. But um, let's try to just work on this guy here. See if we can finish it up, or mostly finish it up. So, let's look at the pinks. So th this is the like the main pink. This is called Doomfire Magenta. There might be another one in the. I think there is isn't. There's one like a. Gosh, what was it called? This might not be the right color though. But well, let's try. Um, I feel this is not the right color though. Um, well, I can use the one I had. I have one. This one bottle of. Uh, Speed paint. Let's see how this works. Now these come with agitators in them. I don't know that they're necessary. We'll put a little bit in the bowl here. Actually, it probably needs more of a mix. So, but you can see this is drying already pretty well in here. It'll pop right out. You just push the little thingy out. It'll come out the other end. So these are the speed paints. I would like to try more of them. Uh, but I'm, I'm really kind of dedicated to these um, contrast paints. I really feel they do a great job. But this is a pretty good pink. So let's see what it looks like when we do it on here. Again, I'm going to use the same brush. Now, it's, it had black on it, so make sure you clean it really well. I do have a, it has a lot of black in the ferrule. So let's clean it if I can find. This is the end of this bottle of, uh, so old that it doesn't even have a barcode on it. I feel this is in the last 20 years, but come on, it had to have a barcode if it was in the last 20 years. So it might even be older than that. It might have gotten it when I was in college. Uh, this is a newer bottle that I have, which I don't think I've used at all. Um, it does have a barcode on it. But this stuff's great for cleaning brushes. They also sell, Monument Hobby sells this. I've not used this yet. I just bought it for the heck of it and tried it out to try it out. Um, but this stuff works pretty great here. I mean, you can see I've used it forever. It does a great job of getting color out. So I really don't want any of black. It, oh, who knows, though, it really actually kind of has black already in it or the dark brown. Um, but you, you clean it up and you pull the, you twist it and pull the bristle. Well, at least I do. I don't know that I've done this for years. My old teacher taught me how to do this stuff. With We didn't have this kind of cleaning solution. We used... Uh, I don't know if he bought like a whole bunch of them, but we used uh, Army Surplus bars of soap. And it worked kind of like this. They were brown bars of soap. They were really strange looking. Um, but they cleaned and um, they did a good job. So let's see here. This is a pretty good pink. I need to buy the Voluspa maybe is the color in the GW set. I need to buy it because I, I, I didn't get it before. I like my favorite pink, which doesn't even exist anymore. This has been put in another bottle. Was the Warplock purple? I loved this purple. Um, it's the last of what I got, and that's old. Um, so I'm going to go full intensity. Let's see what we get here. It's not too strong. Now they did some cool shading. Um, I watched a Dana Howell video where she was doing the speed paints. She uses all the paints. Um, I think she was involved in helping with the speed paints, but she was using, as a matter of fact, I know she was, because uh, I think that video was around the time that she was 
kind of advising on that. Um, but uh, she did she, she did a shading thing with it, like a quick shading, and I bet you could do the same thing here, um, somewhat, on these. Ooh, there's some black talons right there. I didn't do. I'll have to do that. That's cool. Um, so these are kind of like pink. Now, you know, don't kill yourself trying to get in there. I'm going to try to do a little bit on the other side, but I tend to mess things up. I just want a little bit of hint of pink in there. I don't know if you can see me, but I was painting the little cable, essentially. But I bet the Voluspa pink is this color. Um, this seems fine, though. You know, these are, these are okay. I mean, these are cheaper. I think they're about the same amount of uh, paint. Um, but they had like a reactivation thing, which uh, I was kind of afraid of. This is actually one of the new bottles. Um, and reactivation was always nervous because I end up coating. Now, that was, I think, what Dana Howell was doing was specifically um, uh, using the react reactivation to... Oh, I didn't do a very good job on that black there. Um, you using the reactivation to do blending which seemed really interesting. I have not done that. I don't have, I'm pretty certain I could still buy the original speed paint because that was her thing. Um, I just love it. I love how everybody's coming up with all these great ways to use these, everything. You know, these, are, like the, a lot of people love to use the contrast paints to airbrush. Uh, and you know, they don't require much thinning, if any, because it's already pretty thin um, to, actu to actually work. And you know, it's, it's not going to work like contrast paints will normally, but um, but they're great for like doing some sort of an overall tone. Uh, boy, where does that go? So they have like things going on with it in the shading. Boy, that's some really freaky looking stuff. But we'll see here. We might do some of those things. Actually, that is not the same. That bottom loop is something else. What is going on there? You can do whatever you want. I'm like, I'm, no, it's pink. It looks more kind of segmented bones than this does up here. But uh, let's go for it. So we want to, I want to do a little bit more on the teeth to make them look more Horrifying. I'd really like them to de be like the black ones in the aliens. <laughs> I mean, I think those teeth were black. In Alien, anyway. It's been a while since. I think he loves that movie. But it's been a while since I've watched it. So I still have to do the base. I'm not going to get that done today. Um, I do love, if you're into the... Okay, so a good thing to get into, I have a million of them here. Uh, this is an older set, but I'm just going to show you this. If you really want to just start painting, and it's a little more expensive than it used to be. Um, let's see, does it have a price on it? doesn't say. Um, this is a Night Vault set. This is for Warhammer Underworlds. It's a full-on two-player game. There's lots of war bands, but this is three minis. Like, if you want to get started, I mean, you can even, they sell... At least they used to. I have not been. They closed the GW store near us. us. Um, these are great. Single miniature. If you want to start doing, and I, I mean, I don't know that it's a Terminator in here because it's a, ver a variety of minis in here. Wait, sorry there. Um, it's cool. You just, it's kind of a, you know, you get what you get box, but there's, a, I guess, 10 different miniatures maybe or nine different miniatures in the series and two of the, they show you what these four you know. There's seven, excuse me, and then there's two more that you might know. I don't know what this one times question mark is. Um, but they're all, there's lots of inexpensive ways to try it out. Again, I really think these little boxes that come from, uh, that they sell at places like uh, Barnes & Noble. There's a place in Germany, too, that sells them. Um, uh, very similar kind of store, but a little bit more than, Barnes & Noble's like, in the United States, it's just books, mostly. And some, some electronics because of their um, uh, nooks, their readers. Um, they sell them and they do, um, you know, it's a pretty good price. 
and you can get into the hobby. And there, you know, a lot more. I remember I was very excited. I actually bought something at um, Target when Games Workshop had a little set that they sold. Um, I think that had the. I think it had one of my bot had paints in it. I just wanted to see. I, I, I'm always excited about the idea that um, it's not in focus. That uh, you can get people into the hobby, and hopefully learn to appreciate the games. You know, their their games are fun. I mean, I'm absolutely in love with the miniatures. I, I think they're the best in the business. Every time I think, I see somebody's new miniatures, I'm knocked out. Like, oh, hey, Games Workshop's uh, really already doing, they're doing great. You know, they don't, they're not falling behind. They've, they know what they're doing. Uh, let's see here. So it's not bright, not necessarily bright enough. So I might end up doing another coat later of the white on top of it. It's pretty good over here. It's it's light. It's not as pale as they have them in the, the thing. Now, if you were to do this in the standard Games Workshop paint style, you would paint this entire body in Wraithbone, is what I, they've got going on here. And so everything's going to be bright. All your colors are going to be bright. You don't have to do this crazy stuff that I'm doing where it's extreme kind of uh, shading. But you know, it's also pretty simple. You buy a can of paint. Uh, they also have, I'm pretty certain Wraithbone's around. They have a new one. They replaced, I think, the Codex Gray, I think it's what it's called. I don't see my bottle here. Um, but this is the white scar. This is their new white. Whites are tough paints. Um, wow, I've dropped this twice now, and it's knocking all the parts out. This is the Space Marine box. Um, Whites are tough. I really liked the Codex Gray. I, th I really believe that's what it's called. Let me see if I can find the, cut of the paint. Um, I don't see it, though. It should be here. Um, it was a great color, but they got rid of it. Now, it was a cooler color. So this was, I actually like the white color. Um, I like the, the, the white wraith bone on these things. So I might put a little bit more to just brighten these up a bit, but I think they look pretty good. So what they did on the shade, oh, I closed the book. <laughs> Crazy person. Um, I really love these, though. I mean, look how great these look. They're so fun. So I might not have got enough pink in there. I see more like in their joins of their limbs. So let's see what I can do here. Oh, wow, there you can see it. That's pretty cool. Ooh, that's too wet. So one of the things you can do is I, I generally wipe it on my palette a bit, and then I also check it on my skin to see that it's not a, a lot. There's a guy, Brushworks, maybe, on YouTube. Really great information about um, uh, how to blend paints and stuff if you're going to use traditional uh, stuff. And he was, like, talking about the right mixture of, you know, how to thin your paints the proper level. Um, and I mean, it's one of the things you need to lo learn. It's it'll because you're going to have much more success uh, with your uh, paint jobs if you know how to mix the paint. Now, I was never. I'm okay at it. Um, I didn't do his kind of. I like. I'm intrigued by his method. I need to learn it. Uh, he was saying, you know, you like the method is. I was actually showing how the paint was kind of drawing into itself here in the palette. So it might have been the right level of thinning already. Um, it's not on camera, I'm sorry. So, you know, these are get, it's going on pretty bright here, right? But once it starts to, to dry, it'll get darker. Um, so yeah, they got a lot going on with these eyes. I think I'm going to. Are their eyes black? Nope, they're kind of white. They're scary looking. Um, oh, I don't think I did those little divots here. That's too much. Now it'll dry down. I mean, go, uh, contrast paints do a pretty great job. 
might get, let's just see how that works if I don't let it spill out. Um, the cool thing about contrast paints is they generally look awesome just coming out of the pot. You don't need to thin them much. Um, and again, I don't know that water's great with them. Uh, I have a little bit in my brush. Uh, and I use contrast medium, but contrast medium does not really thin the paint. It just it, it reduces the intensity of the color, uh, which is great. You want that for um, you want that for the variety of. Uh, let's put some between his little his bony fingers. Oh, it looks like it's got that kind of stuff going on in there. And there's stuff like this going on on the gun too. I did some of this here. There's a hand coming up underneath the gun here from this hand. Let's put some in that join. It's also, you can use a little bit of paper towel to thin it out. Going on here in front of the, so that might require a little bit of contrast medium. Let's use that. What brand is my paint mixer? So Janet, I'm using it's kind of expensive now. It's been, I think I bought it, it was 70 and it's, I've seen it for $70. This is the Lab Genius one. It's small, I like it. It has worked great for me for a long time now. Uh, I was really worried about this silicone uh, top. It is not broken down yet. I think it would still work, but I would be sad if it broke because it would probably get a lot more dust and stuff inside of it. Uh, it works really, really well. Um, and it's on Amazon. I, if you keep your eyes on it, it will probably drop down in price again. Some people don't recommend it. I think the Vortex mixes are great. Um, I almost bought like an industrial one. You can get like um, real lab mixers, Vortex mixers, and they'll be durable. There's a guy that does some, I think they're called Typhoon Vortex mixers. Um, they're amazing looking, but they're just huge for me. And... Um, But I love this mixer. I think it's really great. It's been fantastic for a long time for me now. So I didn't do the gun. I, I, I need to do the, what is it again? The flesh borer. I need to do the top armor on that too. I mean, you don't have to do it. You can do whatever you want. But I'm going to try to follow the guidelines that they have on this. I think I got a little bit of pink. I got a little carried away there. But you know what? We're just going to work that to our advantage and put a little bit of pink on there to make his, I oh, can't see it, I'm sorry. Just a thin amount on there to give it kind of this weird fleshy mess going on here. Um, I like to have a little bit of terrain here on the, and I'll probably base this, I'll figure out something for basing it. Oh, I think I was talking about that. That's what I love about these minis. On the, Mar uh, the Warhammer um, Underworlds, they're already based. They have also this fantastic, these are kind of, this has some like uh, you know, thorny vine going on in here that could be related to this stuff here, maybe. This is also, this was from the very first um, Warhammer Underworlds game, the Night Haunt, Ma Night Vault main box. I think these are called Night Haunt. I, that is correct. I bought some of that stuff for Nikki. Uh, this was previous to Contrast Paints. This was... Um, I think I did this in 2018. This is uh, what they called a shade. Um, I think they've actually converted this shade. I think this was Hex Wraith. No, not Hex Wraith. Um, what was this one called? Night Gloom? Uh, it is now a contrast paint. Um, so it used to be a technical paint. It's cool. I mean, this is where I first kind of got a little bit of my taste of contrast paint. And that's why I knew I was excited about these, uh, the contrast paints from GW. But yeah, look at this base here. It's got bones in it and the, the vines and... This is the ra the Briar Queen, and it's got these roses on here. I actually want to do a little bit more to that, but I've broken it. Oh, my gosh, so many times. This is the, uh, it's fallen and it's broken right here. I think I've glued that twice. Uh, it is not great. Uh, it's delicate. You definitely, I mean, I have this sitting here, and I, I actually didn't drop it. I, br I dropped something else on it. Um, first time painters. Hey, from Peru. Uh, ASP, I think, um, number one, I honestly feel you should try to do one method like this where it's either um, you either airbrush it to do it uh, zenithal highlighted 
or you paint the miniature entirely black and then you uh, um, dry brush it to do the light and then do one of these the contrast paints or the speed paints or the express paints whatever you can get uh, to try them out and see what you get I mean I did this this is an example I I built this miniature but I'd already painted this mini I think they gave it away free a long time ago and my friend Sebastian gave it to me although his finger broke off so it looks like he's giving people the finger um, now this was done traditional style I did this in 2018 I think um, and it looks pretty great his cape is cool I mean there's some great stuff going on here I did not really uh, go berserk but here's the a newer one this was done with um, just contrast paints except for the metals of course those are not contrast and I just draped the, I just did the blue over it now I fixed like a pooling that I didn't catch and you could see it if maybe you can see the shape of it in here in this area that had a coffee what they call coffee staining and I just I just used some shade uh, thin down a little bit thin down with the contrast medium uh, blue that whatever this blue was and uh, fixed it and it looks pretty great and then I use that same contrast paint to do this hand lining of this the, of the inside of the cape I, I, I it's phenomenal and that was all done it, it was done contrast uh, zenithal highlighted but again I put metallic on metallic kind of kills that uh, you can use uh, I think G, uh, they introduced um, army painter introduced some uh, metallics in their speed paints I don't know how good those are um, I think they look pretty great as far as you know I've seen videos of it hey look that does not look good <laughs> where I let that uh, pool I had too big of a pool let's see if I can fix this so you can see right here let's focus it in focus right here it's kind of got like a, a little portal or something going on there so let me see if I can fix it there we go it's a little less but it's pretty strong intense color but that's okay I mean these guys are weird right so let me fix the black I didn't get go done on here this is it right yep let me clean the brush again and do the things I didn't finish now I know I saw something with one of the hooves or the talons that was not painted well right here so let's put a little bit of paint there but I, I've done a lot of videos um, ASP if you look on YouTube um, if you look under our live streams and I think I have a tag you know like we have a a um, playlist called game night paint night so I've it's a lot of videos and they're long but you can see like different methods I've I've experimented with stuff over the uh, time here and learned more and more with these things and I I just love the results I mean this again I'm now probably two hours but these guys turned out really well and it wasn't a lot of effort right and it they're going to be fantastic on the table already um, and you know you could go and do a lot of stuff to even make it more exciting more blending more uh, well for example let's just do a tiny bit we have the brown uh, the white here let's see if I can do it this is not necessarily mixed 100% uh, well so I'm going to thin it out a little bit for what I'm doing I'm going to put in this over here because I don't want the dry paint in there and I'm going to put a little oh where's the distilled water I don't have it in my cup I'll just use um actually I don't want to use that let me see here you kind of want clean water I like distilled water with my paints this is not distilled I'll put a little bit next to it here I think my shirt my jacket just fell not that I need a jacket it is warm a little bit warm here not crazy warm like last week but so I put a little bit of paint in here So this is doing what I was talking about where the you want the where the paint now this is a bowl so it's going to be going back into itself but what I want to try to do here is just a little bit of well it might be too thin um, but I, I'm going to do some lining on the hooves to try to do to look like it's worn out a little bit boy those hooves are black on the um, on the their images that's still probably too wet this is not a great brush it's a little bit old it's actually not that old but it kind of it's a Windsor Newton but it kind of started to I'm I was probably painting too hard on it you know like poking it into the this is the one thing you want to avoid um, 
is poking it into the details of the brush. Really what you should be doing is just delicately touching, you know, if you have the paint, eh, that's a little too strong, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, if you have the paint uh, mixed properly, you should just be delicately touching the miniature. Wow, I don't think you guys are seeing any of this. Come on, focus. You're just delicately touching the miniature to put that paint on, and you want to try to do that uh, because it will, number one, you will probably do a better job painting it. I think I put a little bit too much on there. Um, but you'll also, uh, your brushes will last longer. This one has a definite curl in it. Now there's not as much going on here. I just want a little bit like of them like walking in the, the dirty or rocky terrain. Uh, I actually want a little bit on these details on the around their hose. I don't think I did a very good job of uh, putting that um, Sarah from Sepia on. So I don't know if you can really see it, but um, it's giving it like a little bit of, you know, change and variation on the surface. But you can see it's not, I mean, I, I have a pretty steady hand. I usually use a, I was actually using a pill bottle last week with Candace. Uh, I use a holder and it helps you if you're trying to do, so this is a holder with like, I think this is quake hold, but you can use poster, poster tack on it. This is just a paint bottle, a pill bottle. And, um, and then you can actually really hold it and get your hands more steady. And you kind of want it to be steady for this stuff here. Anyway, I'm actually going to do a little bit of the teeth here, although I might still do a, a very light, uh, kind of a bright white on it. Um, but I want the teeth to be kind of particularly vicious looking. Well, vicious looking for being tiny. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing this off camera. I had a lot of fun doing the um, Jurassic World miniatures. Wow, I did the same thing here with this eye, with this little thing on his head. So what I'm doing is poking a toothpick in there to like break up that, that, um, it's doing it kind of there too. Boy, I did not do a good job. A little bit too much, but that may be just the nature of the paint. I, little small holes. Oh, you know what? This is not the GW paint. So it might be a different kind of process with it. I don't know. So I just do a little bit of, a little bit of work to make those things look a little worn out, but it also makes it look like they're gleaming and things like that. And you know, this is organic and they're touching the ground and so you don't have to worry too much about it. Just and you could do this with a dry brush like totally and it would look great. So it's totally a viable option and not worrying about it. Do they have a lot of the pink on their heads? Sort of. Kind of in their jaw, this stuff here. So yeah, I'm not sure. I, I still the verdict's still out for me on these speed paints. Um now they do sell big sets. There's no doubt about that. Um, I did not buy their contrast, uh, their uh, their medium speed paint medium, but I'm pretty sure I could probably use the contrast medium. I, you know, it is a different formulation, and this is the second version of the stuff they did themselves. And you know, they the people were not 100% satisfied, so they worked on it a little bit. But there you go. That looks pretty good. So now I was opening up to do the black. I did not get to that because I got distracted with the other stuff. Now I want to probably do the same thing on these. Um, see, I didn't do a good job. Now this is black, so I'm not really worried about it. The pink potentially. I mean, it actually is okay. So one of the things I did on last week's stream was we painted like the weird egg sac thingy that was like 
you know, it was the queen that we were working on in that game. Um, we painted it with uh, a pink, actually this pink that we had here. And um, it looked good, but it was like too much. So what I did is I dry brushed a yellow on it and it really was cool. It actually, cause you know, we kind of use like a green, actually we used specifically um, the uh, Plague Bearer Flesh, which is a color from GW. Is it right here? Yes. I love this color. This is another one of my favorite colors. I've used it for many different things, for fabric and all kinds of stuff. Um, and uh, so that yellow kind of tied it into the green. It actually made it look really cool. Okay, so the gun is done there, sort of. Oh, there's a talon on there. It could be like thorns or something. I don't know. Not a very good job there. Cool. It looks like, oh no, his hand is holding it. It'd be awesome if he was plugged into it. Okay, well, there you go. That's pretty good. What time is it here in the UK? It is, so it's probably early in the morning for you. Uh, it is, I don't have my phone, it's, it's 8 o'clock, just about 8 o'clock. So it's 8 hours ahead. So it's 4 a.m. in the UK. Yipes, Eleanor. What are you doing up? Uh, hey, thanks, Ma uh, David, for the uh, resubscription. I'm sorry I didn't hear it because I don't hear all this. So, hey, it's Chris, Space Marine. Doesn't look like an ocean at all. Uh, focus. Ah, there you go. Hey, how are you doing, Chris? Um, yeah, this turned out cool. My issue is I got too many things on the table that it kind of distracts from the focus. Yeah, I don't hear any of the stuff. That I, I'm not tied into the call, which is a bummer. We have an, I had an issue with the software. I have to figure it out when I get off. Um, so this looks already like I did that kind of streaking on it. Now, I think I'm going to do a little bit more purple. So I'm going to go with it just being strong. I don't really worry about it. It should be relatively mixed. I do have black in there. It's okay. Well, I cleaned the brush. It should be okay. Oops, not in focus. So I want these to be a little bit more kind of dimensionally than just the the pale on there, but that's okay. It looks pretty, pretty fantastic. This side's not as uh, intense. Now, if I thin this down, uh, it would be less intense. Shift back to the purple. I just kind of knew what I wanted. Oh, that's already, I didn't need to paint that. Um, I knew that I wanted it to be pretty strong. But that's pretty cool. Now, there's going to be a lot of them. In this game, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I can, it'll tell me at the beginning. Let's look. Um, there's a lot of units this in the Space Marine. Um, so I'm eager to see how this plays. Nikki and I will have to try it once I get these done. There's a lot of minis here, but I could get through them pretty fast. The Space Marine's pretty awesome. Wow, it does not say on here. It's probably on the box. Let's put the, clean the paintbrush a little bit. It has, according to this, 20 Termagants and two Tyranid Ripper Swarms, and then one Space Marine Lieutenant Titus. And he's fighting these by himself. So I'm going to try to do all these. The problem is we are going to um, Spiel, going to Germany uh, a week, a little over a week from now. A little under, little under, uh, a little under two weeks actually. So yeah, um, I think it would be Tuesday. And so we'll be gone for a couple, uh, two weeks almost. Uh, actually, I think it's exactly two weeks because um, we return on Tuesday. Uh, so I won't be able to work on this stuff while I'm away, obviously. I will be painting. I'm going to a paint day, I think, with Sebastian, which I'm very excited about because those guys are pretty fantastic painters. Um, Kai, a friend of, of theirs who loaned me some equipment while I was visiting, uh, is really a great painter. Sebastian's an amazing and fast painter. 
So I love to see and learn from them. Uh, Sebastian, it's to call my mom, um, Sebastian is a fantastic and quick to absorb, like he, he, absor he uh, got into the contrast paints very quickly and really has delivered fantastic results. He did some, gosh, what were those units? They were so nice. I think he did some Eldar, or Eldari as they're called now. Um, and uh, they looked amazing, and he was doing a, a mix of stuff. Uh, you can't sleep, I'm sorry, I know how that is. I have not played Gardeners. What is Gardeners? I'll have to look that up. Um, the, uh, he's just, Sebastian's just a great, and he's been painting for 20 years or something like that, you know, so he's maybe even longer. Uh, and he tries to paint every day now. His job is crazy right now, and they have a young baby, so, um, so I'm going to try to do the same things on all of these. Um, we're going to raid. I'm going to have to leave and do this off screen since I can't, um, can't connect to it uh, on our computer over here, which sucks. Uh, that just literally just introduced this because I streamed with this a week ago. So, I'm, I mean, I get it. They're trying to, you know, they want to make money. And I don't, we use, we have a paid service for Derek and Scott to work on this stuff. But I don't, I don't, I only do this. Um, and I really, it's sad. I wish that I could, I could figure this out. I mean, I use a remote desktop for Windows, but this is a Mac here, which I think you can get a remote desktop connecting to the Windows PC over in the, the control room. So eventually we'll get to it. Um, anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, these turned out pretty cool. I think I might want to go a little bit brighter on the bone, but I don't know. I really like them. I do want to do the base. I do generally paint the edge black, so I'm going to have to figure out. I might do like a... I've never really used it. I used it once here on this. Uh, one of the paints that crackles, you know, like it uh, mud. Uh, and it's pretty amazing, but I think... I mean, I used some tufts of grass. I think that was part of a kit of skulls, blood gore, and something. It was a pretty interesting kit from GW. Uh, and this might have been part of that, or it might have been this. I think it is. I think I used the Agrelian, Agrelian Earth. Uh, and this, I'm sorry, this is like a little teeny bottle that came in one other kit that I bought at one point in time. Uh, and it's probably dead now. Like, it does not, there, a lot of these kind of technical things don't last long. That is pretty much dry in there. It looks like pieces of earth. So there you go. You can't let that sit forever. And, you know, you can't reactivate this stuff, but it's still soft. It's very clay-like. I mean, that's probably what's going on with that paint. It's done to be like a clay. Um, but I need to buy it. And the thing is, is it's kind of a downer. I mean, if you buy it, so what I'll do is I'll get all these ready, and then I'll buy a bottle of it and do them all at once. And then that way I won't waste any. Because any time I bought any of the um, technical types of paints that are like that, they don't last me. I mean, I'm just, I'm not fast enough for the, to use them. And if you work with them in that manner, then you won't waste it. Because I've used, I had um, Necron, what was that stuff called? Necron. Anyway, they used to, they had a dry paint, which was really cool. Because it was already, to do this type of work, dry brushing, was already pretty thick. And you could just put a little bit on there and then dry brush it on and then, uh, and be done. But you know, I did one miniature with this. It's crazy. Uh, and, you know, it was a tiny bottle. That would be awesome to be able to buy it in that size if you were doing just some stuff. But like I said, I'm going to try to do that where I buy I do it and do all of them. Uh, I saw somebody doing a video about it uh, recently and, like, the real method to do that. And they had some great... This is, like, this is my favorite part of the whole mini right here where it's the biggest crackiness is over here. Oh, sorry, you can't see. Uh, this is like the biggest cracks, and over here it's barely anything. But it has like a cool d dust to it, you know, like a like dirt underneath there. Um, and I actually stuck a little bit of, I think that was kitty litter that I painted black and then dry brushed, so it kind of matched these, whatever, these stones. Now, if you notice, I broke this. It's so delicate. And this one might not even be right here. This has got a little bit more. Oops, come on, focus. Hello, focus. There you go. 
This one's sort of broken. This one here's a little bit more. I don't know that it's exactly right. Uh, it seems like it is, but it's so delicate. You got to be so careful with it. But they're cool. These are neat minis. Um, I believe this was in this miniature was in like a how to paint Warhammer fantasy magazine you'd buy, and they give you one miniature, and this was great. It's such a lot of great detail on it, and they had one for for uh, 40k as well. Um, Necron Compound, that is it, Dave's Traveling. I love that stuff. I don't know if they still make it. They probably do. But if you're going to get it, use it up because it turns to jelly, like I think. I had um, the, the, er, the, the rust that they did too, which was really cool. I used it a couple times, and then that was it. Don't do that. Get, get ready to do them all and then do them all at once. I am absolutely going to do that. I'm going to get some of the... the uh, the Agrellan Earth and do that and try it on all of them. So I've got 20 of them to paint, well, actually 22, and then I got the Marine, and then, I mean, some, although it won't be. If you look at this, though, it's sort of like what they got going on here, but then they're on the um, inside of some, like, ruined building. They actually have some cool terrain pieces on here, which is not part of this kit. Um, but yeah, these are cool. Um, anyway, I will try to raid. If you want to join that raid, if you're on Twitch, please do. And say who, hello to whoever. I will, you'll hear me. Let's, uh, I can't cut to anything. Um, but let's go, I'll go in there and do that, and I'll still talk to you. And, um, but thanks for joining us. I'm not hearing anything. I don't think, oh, you know, I turned it down. I did not want to hear myself because I would go crazy. Because um, it's such a delay. It's bad enough when it's a tiny delay uh, when we're on the calls. Um, but, uh, I'll be back on Tuesday to uh, paint again. I'll maybe continue with these. I might, actually might be painting some stuff from Santorini. Uh, there is a new expansion, or there's a Kickstarter they just recently finished. Uh, let's go see if I can get on this and do something. So let's go to the dashboard. Let's see who's, it's after eight, right? So I don't know who will be um, stream manager. Yeah, I wish that I need to figure this out because it's hard to do this. Um, wow, why are we seeing all this stuff? Oh, okay, Wapelius. Okay, Wapelius is an amazing, his is listed as art. He is an amazing painter. He paints with oil paints and he's phenomenal. He was doing Star Wars Shatterpoint when I raided a couple weeks back and oh my gosh, he was doing a Inquisitor with double bladed lightsaber and just mixing his own like very bright almost fluorescent paint with just um, uh, linseed oil and the pigment. Uh, but definitely if you want to join up, uh, check him out, say hello for me, um, and, uh, and check out his style. He's fantastic and he's fast. I wish I was as good as him. Anyway, take care everybody and hope to see you on Tuesday. Have a great one. Let's see how this goes. And so, yeah, if you see you want to join in, please do it. And really, he, just watch for a bit. He is a, an, an amazing painter. Skill beyond what I... And oil paints is amazing. Anyway, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.